Hi, I'm Jim Needham with Honey Lake Clinic here in Greenville, Florida. And I want to talk to you now about resilience. It's one of the 12 core competencies that we focus on at Honey Lake to produce folks that have a spiritual maturity and emotional health. And as we do, let's begin with just a couple of minutes of silence. I'll ask that you breathe deeply and that you focus on the words of Psalms 56.3. As you inhale, whenever I'm afraid, and as you exhale, I will trust in thee. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in thee. Our text is found in the book of Ephesians from the Message translation. Verses 1 through 6. It wasn't so long ago that you were mired in that old stagnant life of sin. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then exhaled disobedience. We all did it. All of us doing what we felt like doing, when we felt like doing it. All of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with a whole lot of us. Instead, immense in mercy and with an incredible love, he embraced us. He took our sin-dead lives and made us alive in Christ. He did all of this on his own with no help from us. Then he picked us up and set us down in highest heaven in company with Jesus, our Messiah. And then in Colossians, the third chapter, it says this, Since then you've been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. And so Paul in Ephesians prays this for the church. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you might know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. Several years ago, Chris and I decided to do what at the time seemed like a daring adventure. While on vacation at the beach, we watched as a speedboat equipped with parasailing regalia took one of the sets of tourists after another for their special ride. The sport was relatively new at that point, and although neither one of us were fond of heights or of thrills, we knew that the view would be spectacular. So we put away our apprehensions and we decided we'd give it a try. As we boarded the boat and strapped on the harness that would lift us up into the air, we talked about how we would handle the fear we anticipated from being suspended several hundred feet above. But we were really in for a surprise. Instead of frightening, the ride was incredibly relaxing. As we floated upward, the boat pulling us and the people on it grew smaller and smaller to our eyes. And soon the sounds of the earth the roar of the boat, the sound of talking and laughter gave way to a wonderful silence. The parasail provided a feeling of weightlessness that moved through our bodies and right down into our souls. Even the smell of diesel and sea were replaced by the smell of crisp, fresh air. But most importantly, instead of the anticipated fear, there was peace. Just those few hundred feet were enough to bring a different perspective. And with that new perspective came a new emotion. Paul in his letter to the churches is very aware how much difference perspective makes. He encourages them to rise above their circumstances and worldly perspective to see things from the vantage point of heaven itself. And he tells us that the possibility of a new view like that is brought to us courteously of the resurrection the ultimate example of earth being overcome by heaven. Recent studies on the characteristics of people who are able to face great tragedies and not only overcome them, but rebound to a more fulfilling life, repeatedly show that faith in something greater than ourselves is one of the factors of their success. Faith allows people to step out of old ways of thinking and set up new ways of seeing their life. Even, perhaps especially, during difficulties and pain. It allows them to rise above the limits of their own minds, the world's pollution and the chatter of naysayers and cynics, blamers and shamers. From the vantage place of heaven, 
earthly events become dwarfed as they're placed in their proper perspective of eternal significance and purpose. God, with the majesty of his power and the depth of his love, comes even more closely into focus. And so the apostles' prayer for those he deeply loved is not one that they would be taken or delivered from the struggles of this life, but rather that, their eye, that the eyes of their hearts would be enlightened. He knows what science now confirms, that enlightened eyes will provide what we need to face a broken world. So let me ask you, what's one concern that has been weighing you down? What would happen if you looked at it from above? How would your fears look then? How would your needs look? How would your motivations appear? Allow me to lead you in a prayer. And you make it a prayer of your heart as I read it to you. Risen Christ, give me enlightened eyes for this situation that I may see it from above. Bring me close to you so that I can continue to live with a bigger picture of who you are and a smaller one of the struggle I'm in. Chris Tomlin's song, I Will Rise, expresses the thought behind this devotional so well. Here are the lyrics, and you can sing along if you like, or just make it your prayer. It says, there's a peace I've come to know, through the, though my heart and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for my soul, I can say it is well. Jesus has overcome, and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory is won, he is risen from the dead. And I will rise when he calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God fall on my knees and rise. I will rise. There's a day that's drawing near when this darkness breaks to light and the shadows disappear and my faith shall be my eyes. Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory is won and he is risen from the dead, and I will rise. Amen, and God bless you.